hello everyone let's see if the presentation will appear who here is actually a people manager so raise your hands kind of okay who here right, still your hands up if you are a people manager in an agile team okay hands, hands down okay, so a few all right cool so uh, as you can see from the title right so it's leading from a distance building high performing performing remote teams i deliberately removed the word agile right so just to make sure that this is really focus on kind of any team right so um so who am i uh two options i'm either brazilian living in the czech republic or i am czech and i live in brazil right so so with the name fernando coleoni maybe you will guess it the correct answer uh the the best way to remember me right so if you watch the movie godfather once you you remember don corleone i'm all, I, i'm almost there don corleone right so fernando corleone, <laughs> almost there um so currently i work at a company called hexagon i am a agile coach scrum master continuous improvement manager whatever you want to like i help teams right so i help teams to to improve the way that they are working. Uh, before that, I worked six years at Red Hat and I worked 13 years at IBM. Um, and a little story about my professional journey that connects to the topic that I wanted to share. So I joined IBM in 2003. Back then, I was fully uh, working from the office 100% of the time, right? So I had or well, everyone had the desktop, not even laptops. So I remember working from the office, going on Saturdays for overtime to the office. I, I had to travel because I lived in a different city. I had to travel every day an hour, right? So to get to there. So this was 2003. Two, three years later, I moved to another team. So 2005, 2006, I got a laptop. And that was the first time I was able to experience home office. But it was not the home office maybe that we have today. It was, yes, you can stay at home if you need to do something very urgent, go to the doctor, maybe take care of your children. Yes, then you can, right? So maybe once a month, once a, once a quarter. So that changed, but not the first experience. Then in 2010, still at IBM, I went to another position, became a project manager, started managing global projects. Then everything changed. Then I really worked, uh, let's say, almost full time uh, from, from home, right? So remotely, because I was uh, working with people from all over the world. Um, my manager was like, yeah, we don't need you in the office, do your job. That's great, right? So completely different uh, experience from the, the start. Then I moved to Red Hat. Then I went back to going to the office. And it was a little bit different for me, right? Because I spent so, so many years working from home. But it was good, right? So at the beginning, I was working four times per week uh, in the office, one or two times per week home office. It was good because my team, the team that I, I was working with, they were there in the office, right? So a uh, little easy, easier to connect and all that. Um, then uh, the pandemic came, lockdown, we went all to stay at home. At Hexagon, I am fully remote. I work from the office 100% of the time. I've never been to any office. I don't even have a badge. So if I need to go to the office, Probably I won't even be able to enter because I uh, I know that there is an office in the Czech Republic. I don't know where is it. It is All right. So uh, fully remote. Well, why I'm I'm telling you all of this, right? So you can all see that the future of the work after lockdown is really choice, right? So there are people here that like to go to the office. There are people here that like to go. Uh, to, to work from home or from you know whatever you want maybe the beach or so 
the, the, the future is you have, or you shouldn't have the option when, where you work, right? And there is this landscape of hybrid work that we see nowadays. Uh, the, the back to the office, right? So companies right now saying, yeah, you worked from home in the lockdown, but now come on back to the office. I don't know if you saw, I, I read recently uh, at uh, some note from uh, IBM uh, that uh, they are demanding managers from the United States to come back to the office, right? So back to the office. They are, they are demanding and it's like, um, well, you have to, if you don't go back to the office manager, well, then probably you should leave. All right, so that's 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 well. Look it up. It's it's interesting to see how some companies are doing that, right? So you have back to the office. You have this kind of mandate, right? So similar to what the what I had at Red Hat, three four times a week um, in the office, then one two times per week at home. Yeah. Then you have the team decides. Um, that's actually what happened at Red Hat with my team. Uh, after the pandemic, uh, you know, management was like, well, you decide. So some people in my team really decided to go fully remote. And some people that couldn't stand more working from home, they went back to the office. Right, so we decided. The important thing is that we were continuously working together in some way and trying to put the pieces of the puzzle the best way that we could. And of course, there is the, the remote, right? So uh, as I said, I am completely remote working from home. Fun fact, I, when I was interviewing for the, the company Hexagon, I was interviewing also for another company. Uh, and when the recruiter called me, the first question or the first thing that she shared was, okay, so here at this company, it's three times per week in the office, two times per week at home. Are you okay with that? And I said, yes. Okay, so then, okay, we continue, right? But then I had these two, uh, two companies. I decided for remote, because for me, it works best, right? So as you can see here, working for me, uh, already in a good way. Now, I would like to ask you, if you have your phones, try to go to slido.com or with the QR code. Let's see if this is gonna work. I would like to, un to understand what is your landscape today? Who here is working really remote 100% of the time? Who here, like you had to go back to the office? Who here is in like, yeah, I'm, you know, I, my team decided that we can do everything or, okay, so it's changing. And I don't know if it will work with everyone. It seems, oh, 38, okay, this works fine. All right, so the team decides, meaning, no, you can do whatever you want, it's meaning, and then remote. And some people back to the office. All right, that's that's actually very good. It shows that you have flexibility. So cool. All right. So if you were here yesterday, you maybe saw Jurgen, right? So uh, he has a quote: "If you want an organizational structure that can handle the challenges of the twenty-first century, you need to ensure that there is practically no difference between." a physical and a virtual team, right? So this is really powerful for the people managers, right? Because this you need to ensure it's, well, you people manager, right? So it's your responsibility if you are managing a team that is distributed, you have to, to make sure that they work together uh, in a good way. Uh, and as I said, this is not, focusing on agile uh, teams. But of course, if we're talking about agile teams, 
agile coaches, scrum masters would be there, hopefully to support the managers, right? To make sure that there is no difference between a physical and a virtual team. Uh, things. to consider a better documentation is needed, right? So because people are all around the world, there needs to be some way that you document your processes, your procedure, procedures, your decisions, and everyone can see, right? So that's, that's a given. Uh, the next part is that you need to have an information management system that will be able to help the team to get what they need when they need it, right? So I, I know that some of you are maybe thinking, oh, Jira or Confluence, yeah? It, it could work if people wouldn't create a mess uh, around it, but that's kind of the idea, right? Uh, if, if the information is there, it's managed wisely, and that's where a manager you know, could come in and help, then it's good. What usually happens is, unfortunately, is like, it's just a mess, right? So maybe it would be for uh, something for a manager together. Maybe if you are in an agile team, agile coach, scrum master to, 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 to work together, create this better documentation and the inform manage the information more wisely. Feedback loops, when we're talking about this hybrid remote setting for a manager is not only that once a year performance review and we are done right so that that doesn't work um so in a remote setting managers leaders we, they need to shorten the feedback loop that's usually what we are we tell you no know, the scrum masters that your coach is here we tell every time for our teams shorten the feedback feedback loop cycle right so this is the, the same case for the managers. They need to connect more and talk more with their employees. That, that's extremely important. Communication, well, this is a kind of general, right? So uh, communication is important in every aspect, remote or not remote. But here we are talking about the leaders really mastering new ways of communication, right? because then there are specific preferences that team members will have either, I don't know, email or a call, a video call, or, or I don't know. So there are all these different ways that teams will communicate and the managers need really to, to master th this way of communicating or new way. And then there's the work-life balance. That's really also changes, right? Because uh, probably you felt this at lockdown, right? So your life, when you were working from home, your personal life blends in with your professional life and you don't even know, you know what's happening. It's, it feels like you are working all the time or it feels that you are working a lot more than you actually should. Right, and because it's easy, right? So your laptop is there. Hey, I woke up earlier this morning. Maybe I will start working reading emails. And that's not good, right? So people start working uh, a lot more. And what is the actual, the, the biggest change or challenge for everyone, for the people? Uh, researches show that it, uh, challenge, I mean, when, for example, lockdown came, right? So working remotely, uh, what was the biggest challenge? Researches show that it's not actually the performance, right? So it was not the performance that was the challenge in lockdown. People were working well, delivering, but actually it was burnout. Maybe some of you felt this, right? So you are uh, working so much at home and you have, you know, you feel burnout. This is one of the key things that a leader would be focused on in this new remote setting with employees, to focus on having people not burning out, right? So sustainable pace as one of the uh, agile principles, right? So 
this is, was the biggest change uh, for, for people and uh, it was not performance. So leaders, and in here I include agile coaches, right? Because you are, would be supporting the leaders should be focusing on, on this, right? Uh, not burning out. So another question, take your uh, phones uh, again. The question is what is important in your view for a manager leader when leading in a remote environment? What do you think is important for a manager or a leader when they are leading in a remote environment? So what should happen is like, okay, some, some things, okay, someone put a number, right? So more people wrote communication. Clarity of communication, information, listening. Relationship, taking care of teams engagement. Okay, communication, trust, empathy. Relation, I would take that's kind of a relationship building, right? Interesting. Well-defined goals. Oh, I like the fast internet. Yeah, always necessary. Always oh, space for virtual coffee chats. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have a kind of a, so it, go, it goes back to communication, right? And remember, for a leader, sometimes you need to change the way that you communicate to be effective with your team. Okay, trust, oh, salary is also there, okay? Empathy, relation, okay, clear expectations, that, that is good. Okay, all right, so interesting. What happens in a hybrid remote setting, right? So in our uh, world where everyone was in the same office, right? So the manager was there working with the team and that was me back in 2003 where my manager was there. He was focusing on understanding what time I was arriving at the office, what time was I was leaving the office. He was doing those walk around to see if people were really working, right? Um, right now we are away from this, right? So right now the manager, the leader really has to be focusing more on the expectations, making sure that the, the teams understand their roles, their responsibilities. So basically here from all of this, in a remote hybrid environment, a manager, a leader should be really focusing on creating that transparency in the system making sure that the team understands why they doing what they are doing, right? So that's what we agile coaches try, uh, Scrum Masters try to work with the team to make sure they understand you know, why you're doing this right now. That's the same with a, a leader. And we, if we are working with an agile team with a leader, we are supporting them in creating that transparency, right? So really making sure that the teams understand the why behind of all that happens, right? So not only within the team, but within the organization, right? So that's um, important to, to, to think about how they are creating the transparency in the system. Another very important point is trust, more so in a remote uh, hybrid environment, right? Because here, we are really focusing on three key things, reliability, consistency, and responsiveness. Reliability is really, uh, is not what time you are starting, what time you're finishing your work, but are you doing what you're telling us that you were supposed to be doing? All right, so uh, that, that's the first thing. Consistency, are you doing what you, told us you would be doing in a quality manner, in a timely manner, right? And you said you were going to deliver this 
this time we, you did you know right so th there's timely quality there responsiveness in a remote environment is if i need to find you we will find you how many times you had that i don't know on online right so you usually use some chat or something that you send a message to the people and they respond three four five hours later that Right, so the responsiveness is very important in a remote environment. In co-located place, the manager would just hunt you down, right? So in a distributed place, it's a little bit different. So trust is uh, really focusing more on, are you reliable with your work? Are you delivering what you're telling that you would deliver? And if I need to get to you, we will get to you. Right, so not, nothing related to, are you starting your work at nine and finishing at five, right? So nothing like that. Uh, but what is really important for a leader, right? Leader must model the behavior of trust. Nothing worse than a leader coming to an employee and saying something, but the behavior is not there from the leader, right? So. If I need to find you, my boss, my leader, will I find you? No, he's never available. If the manager is saying that you know he was supposed to do something and he doesn't, right? So the lack of trust is already there. So it's very important for leaders to model the behavior of trust. If we are in working with agile teams, right? So usually that's one one thing of the Scrum Master agile coaches probably are helping leaders with right because we want to to build trust uh in teams but that's one of the if it's not an agile team again leaders must model the behavior they want if that doesn't happen then it's going to be difficult to have a high performing team and even more difficult to have a high performing remote team another thing that usually uh is difficult in a remote setting is this fight the us versus them mentality right at red hat my manager she was from the united states and we had teams in the united states and in the czech republic um one nice from my view nice nice thing that she did for us to not have this mentality like czech republic and united states and all that uh, is that every year we had a conference that was sponsored by by red hat and she would and it was happening in czech republic she usually would bring everyone from the united states to the czech republic so we would gather around at the conference everyone together and then we would spend a week together in you know in a room and we would discuss our goals for the year and you know clarify questions do presentations then we would have team building activities this really helped us never have this us versus them mentality right uh, but it can happen and again it's something for the leader to really keep an eye on if it happens then the leader needs to jump in um, and uh, improve the situation and uh, one important thing to also for, for leaders and everyone is to answer the question, right? So what does success look like? For Agile teams, we Scrum Masters, Agile coaches, we are usually there to help the team and the managers answer the question, right? So what does success uh, look like? But for remote teams, it's even more uh, important, right? Because here the focus is on the results that they are uh, delivering, right? So not the time that they are working, right? So I have people uh, that I work with now, they start working at 6 a.m. because they need to do something during the, the lunch or they don't work in the afternoon and then they start later uh, on, on the day like hey i will be out this afternoon but i will start working again at 6 p.m right so it's fine right so success 
is really measured on what they are delivering, nothing else. Uh, so the question, a very important question to answer from a leadership perspective, what does success look like, but how do you measure success? Right, so that's another important point. It's not, again, if you, you're not in the office, right? So it's not how many hours you are working, but what are you doing? What are your goals? At Red Hat, uh, at Hexagon now, I think, um, you know, and at Hexagon, I think it's even better because everyone there, I think 95% of the team is remote. We focus on what are our quarterly goals, right? So what we want to achieve. Um, define that, document, document that in a good way. What I think it's uh, important that uh, how we are measuring it, we are getting also input from everyone from the team, right? It's not like the leaders saying, uh, okay, so this is our goals. You go there and deliver it. No, it's really a conversation, right? So uh, the part of the documentation and information management system it's really something that they are giving to the, the employees and then the employees have a way of saying something back on the commitments, on the goals, right? So, uh, and it works well. And, you know, you measure it by uh, your achievements, you know, the, your deliveries. Um, they do have uh, a, a good things related to customer surveys, employee surveys, right? So all this is done uh, online. So the two things to keep in mind is what does success look like, right? So leaders need to focus on that and how you're going to measure it. And of course, as a leader, this information does, does not stay with you. You should share and you should ask for feedback from the team, right? Lastly, some tools. How many of you use these tools? Everyone, right? So you use Slack, you use, I don't know, Google, Microsoft Teams, Miro. So you already use here. Um, and this is part of the communication that uh, a lot of you said about what is important, right? So right now, after lockdown, everyone learned how to use this. Some of you already used before because you were remote. Some of you had to learn because you never worked from home and it's a new scenario for, for some of you. But for management, for leadership, right? So this is the part that they need to master, right? Uh, as an example, um, my, my manager or my teams, my organization there, we had a restructuring, right? So some things changed uh, in our team structure. Um, and it's a simple example, but I really liked the approach. So I report to the head of product development uh, uh, and he, as a leader, what he did was with this restructure, he could just go schedule a meeting and say, we are changing and that's it. And don't ask, don't ask questions, right? So what he did, because we are all remote, he actually did a very nice mirror board, very detailed what was happening, right? So, and he asked people to, hey, look at this mirror board, put your questions, put your comments. Uh, if you think, you know, should be changed something, you know, put some remarks. Uh, he did that uh, probably a week before the official meeting. And when we went to the meeting, right? So there were a lot of, questions, a lot of ideas before, right? So uh, as I said, everyone remote, very easy way to, to foster engagement, right? So managers need to focus on using the tools that they have at hand to, to improve the, the way that um, they work with the teams. It goes in line with what you shared, part of communication, right? But also, there are other ways that, or other tools or other approaches that they can take. Uh, for agile coaches, scrum masters, yeah, this is easy, right? So team agreements, social contracts, yes, we use them. But this is important as well for, for, uh, for the managers, for leadership, right? So 
some sort of uh, team agreement to say how we communicate, how we collaborate, what success look like looks like for us. This uh, probably you know you notice this is from Jurgen Apple, right? So uh, management 3.0. But there are other team agreements templates out there, right? So social contracts. This is just an example, right? So what leaders can use in a remote setting to share for and to put in uh, very transparently what the team will do, right? Uh, I don't know if you know this. This comes from a company in Norway, if I'm not mistaken. But this is this is kind of a uh, it's an approach called tight, loose, tight. Um, if you want to know more, you can go there. But uh, basically, uh, from a leader standpoint, right? So you use this tight, loose, tight approach like this. You are tight, close to the team when you are explaining the why of the things, why you are doing this, why we are going to that direction. So this is tight. You're working closely to the, with the team. Then the loose part is the how the team is going to work. That's for the team, right? And even um, in the article, they give the example of Scrum to work in sprints, right? So, um, so for some of you that, that's okay, but imagine teams that don't work in an agile way. Uh, so the how to do it, that's what we try to do, self-organizing teams. So that's part of the manager that's loose. Leave, leave the team how they want to do it, that's fine. And then go tight again on the results, what they created, what they learned. And then the manager is there understanding you no, know, maybe what are the impediments or um, you know, what things did not go as expected, right? So this approach helps the leader to focus on what is important with the team, lets them do the job, not to the micromanager way, management way, and then focus on the learnings from that. Uh, and lastly, I, may, I, I talk about the work-life balance, right? I said that you know, for remote employees, there is this blend. We never know when it's like at home, when we are on, when we are off. Like it feels like we are 24 seven kind of working, right? For a manager, so this is not a, a Two, but more like a for a, a leadership to understand when your employees, when the, the individuals in the teams are on and off. I don't know if you have seen examples uh, like this. Uh, for example, emails from people at five a.m. I don't know if you notice that. Uh, sometimes I, I do emails from people like 5 a.m., 11 p.m., and you know it's not their normal work hours, right? Um, these are the kind of uh, things that a leader should be looking at. I remember um, at Red Hat, my manager, if she would see something like this, she would call it out, right? Hey, you sent an email yesterday at 6 a.m., What's up with that? Or you sent an email later. Or, hey, why are you sending this message? We weren't supposed to be on vacation, right? So these are the things, simple things, that a leader should be looking at to make sure that the people that you are leading don't burn out, right? So focusing on this on and off, right? So the work-life balance is really, really important, something that a leader needs to focus on, something that Agile coaches, you know, if we are supporting leaders in Agile teams, we also should be focusing on. Um, I, I have two daughters, so it's easy to kind of disconnect, right? Because usually uh, I finish work at five, 
I'm, I'm able to close here and then, hey, it's time to play with the daughters because they are pulling me, right? So you, you need to find uh, things outside of the work that you like, especially if you are remote, because then, um, uh, you know, your hobbies, uh, uh, what you do outside of work, you have this disconnect, right? So, and it's really important, right? So, um, and for a leader, keep an eye on this. If your uh, employees are really on all the time, you should be doing something about it. All right, with that, I uh, just wanted to say, uh, if you want, you can connect to my LinkedIn here. And if you want to know more about remote working, you can uh, go to the Collaboration Superpowers website. Uh, I'm a licensed facilitator and I can show more about uh, remote working. Is this right? Thank you in Polish. Yeah? Okay, so thank you in Polish. I just, I just know, uh, thank you in Czech, which is almost the same way. Yeah.